What is my name, job title, and position? Um, my name is Andrew Princep. I am a cisgendered gay male. My pronouns are he, him. Um, I am the Keeley Rutherford Junior Research Fellow um, at the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory and also at Wardham College Oxford, um, which is a postdoc by any other name. Um, what is a quantum material is an excellent question. Um, weird materials, fun materials. Um, so I would probably say that it's a material where something which is intrinsically quantum mechanical is important. So it might be that obviously one of the key facts about quantum mechanics is that energy levels are quantized. It might be something where the quantization of energy levels becomes very relevant to the physics. Um, in condensed matter, that might mean at very high temperatures, in fact, like well above room temperature, um, the discrete nature of the energy levels in an electron system can be super important. Um, but it can also mean that you have some weird low temperature property. Um, indeed, like the existence of electrons, their spin um, is often important for magnetism. So anything that involves magnetism is in principle quantum. Uh, although your fridge magnet might feel, not feel particularly quantum to you. Um, but quantum materials are extremely varied. So some of them mix as exotic low temperature stuff, some of it is useful high temperature stuff. Um, not that low temperature things isn't import useful, but it's uh, hard to justify. Can I summarize my research in one sentence? Shooting particle beams at tiny uh, Artificial crystals. <laughs> I think that's a good one. Um, why do I do this research? I do this research because, if I'm super honest, it's because I, it's enjoyable. It's really fun. Um, it gets me up out of bed in the morning. Um, I believe that it's going to be super useful for mankind generally. Um, if you look at a lot of the really useful things like the memory elements in computers, the LCD screen of your phone, telecommunications, the internet, uh, transistors, all of these things generally rose from really fundamental research that nobody thought was going to be like the next big thing in terms of technology. Um, but then after people did a bunch of research, some more people said, well, okay, maybe we could do something really useful with this. And then we got modern technology. Um, so I think it's reasonable to justify doing research just because it's fundamental, it's there, we should learn about it. Certainly, that's probably the only way you can justify particle physics, um, which is very popular. Um, and so, yeah, I definitely just do it because it's fun, first and foremost. And interesting and weird. What is the best part of your job? Um, conferences. <laughs> Probably traveling all around the world, meeting and working with really interesting and varied people. You make a lot of friends at conferences, um, even aside from useful networking contacts. You just meet cool people who are doing cool things. Um, and it's always really interesting to talk to other people about the stuff that they're doing, why they're excited about it, what they think is cool about it. Um, for me, that's probably the highlight. Especially since Day to day, not much happens in my kind of research. You tend to do one big experiment every few weeks um, or few months, and sometimes it doesn't work. So oftentimes it doesn't work. So if that's the only thing that really excites you about your research, you'd be disappointed quite a lot of the time. So um, how did I get to where I am now? Um, mostly on planes. Uh, I did my undergraduate in Western Australia at the Curtin University of Technology. I actually did a degree in nanotechnology, which is very far from physics, realistically. 
I did a lot of chemistry, a lot of physics, a lot of maths as an undergraduate. And then in my third year of my degree, I fell madly in love with my third year electromagnetism lecturer. She was just the coolest scientist that I ever met. And I decided that I wanted to do work with her. She was offering a summer project and I thought it was super cool. It was some really intense mathematics of scattering theory. So in this case, it was uh, application of scattering X-rays to uh, magnetism in rare earths. Um, then I did my master's project with her. Then I did my PhD with her. And my PhD, uh, she got a job at a different university, um, the Australian Defence Force Academy, weirdest university I've ever been to. Uh, but she moved there and I moved with her. So that's where I did my PhD. And when I applied to do my, P uh, when I finished my PhD, I went looking for research jobs, so postdoctoral research fellowships. The only three that I found that were kind of really in my area were at the University of Bristol, the University of Oxford, and the uh, ETH in Zurich. I applied to all three of them, and Oxford was the only one that gave me an interview. So uh, I said yes when they offered the job to me, um, which was really good. And I've been here for seven years since I moved, um, with a brief exception of uh, being a visiting scientist at the Helmholtz Centrum in Berlin. Um, and so, yeah, that's more or less the story of how I got here. Um, what do I like to do outside of work? So most people who know me um, for more than about 30 seconds will know that I really enjoy three things. Eating, board games, and powerlifting. Um, eating is a very important prerequisite of powerlifting. Um, and so I compete as a powerlifter. I will be doing my next competition in July. Uh, and I think that this kind of hobby, which you're super obsessed with, is really important to have as a scientist, especially like a career academic, because academia can be really uh, disappointing a lot of the time. You get rejected a lot of the time. Your whole career is basically built around uh, dealing with rejection. So you are rejected by physics when your experiments fail. You're rejected by the academy when you send your paper off and it comes back with loads of red ink and not accepted uh, scribbled on it. And you're rejected from grants. So yeah, being having hobbies that you can focus on outside of academia is extremely good for giving you something else to think about. Um, when you're sort of saying, okay, Mr. Reviewer, I don't think you quite understood what I was going for with that uh, paper, so would you like to try again and maybe accept me this time? Um, or going back to your experiment and saying, oh, well, okay, that didn't work, so I'll try it this way this time and hopefully that will give me what I want. And powerlifting is especially good for this because you get out more or less exactly what you put in and you get a little bit stronger every day and that continual progress is extremely good um, for just like giving you something to keep on with day to day if you're in a particularly bad place like maybe you got a paper and a grant rejected in the same week that happens to a lot of my colleagues um, and you can get really bummed you can go out have a lot of drinks or you can just go lift something which is 150 kilos and feel happy um, what one invention or discovery would you like to see in your lifetime? That's an extremely difficult question. <laughs> I did joke today because I saw somebody had 3D printed a violin, uh, which looked a lot like a futuristic space laser gun. Um, and the violin is a piezoelectric violin, so it works using stuff that I've done research on. Um, and then I joked that this is more or less the prelude to one of my favorite science fiction novels, The Hydrogen Sonata, where a, the main character has four arms, 
specifically so that she can play an instrument called the bodily acoustic antagonistic undecagon string, which is like a violin that you have to sit in and it has 12 strings and playing any one of the strings makes the other 11 strings sound different and you need to play it with four arms simultaneously. Um, and it was an instrument that was specifically designed so that they could play this disgusting sounding piece of music that is incredibly difficult to play. So uh, the joke was that um, as a challenge it was without peer and as music it was without merit. Um, and this incredibly fancy piece of equipment was designed just to play this ridiculous piece of music and it was this character's life goal, life ambition to just play it successfully because it was so challenging. And I thought that that would be a really cool thing to see brought into the world. Like an incredibly complicated piece of machinery that would be used just to carry out some random life ambition to play, do something super hard. So I think that's a piece of technology that I would like to see. Um, yeah, so that is who I am, what I do and what I think, so.